Welcome to the Voice of the Coast. I am your host, Danica Long. With me, we have Mayor Rodney Grogan with the City of Patterson. And Happy New Year to you as well as to you. Well, Happy New Year and God bless. That's right. We're gonna, we're gonna need every bit of it because 2024 here we are, and of course, I love to have our mayors come in, especially kind of get some projections and you know what do you foresee the future of the city of Patterson? What does it look like? And let's kind of just start talking about water breaks. I did the same thing with Franklin, so you've been having a series of water breaks, and I I think you've alluded to the fact because of the drought, and now we're gonna be headed into a cold snap. How are you being able to Well, to you know, it? one thing, we've made it um, convenient for our citizens to watch us on Tuesday night, the first Tuesday of every month for our uh, council meetings. And I think for the past six months, I've been telling people, you know, we were going to be having some serious problems with the drought. And uh, I want to say probably October, um, things just went haywire with the shifting and everything. And we've just been having so many breaks that next week we'll be, we will be amending our budget because probably about $250,000 to $300,000, we are over budgeted in that department. And just recently um, at one of my uh, state meetings, we were told prepare, be prepared for the Arctic blast. And so we, we're getting ready for that. So, um, we're having breaks, but right now I have a break in a certain part of the area of Patterson, whereas they don't even make that type of piping anymore. So we had to order some special type of equipment, and uh, it's 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 tedious. It's very and so when you work in one area, mm -hmm. we did a job on Hickory Street, and we worked in one area, and the next day, less than a hundred feet, yeah, had another. Wow. So we're no different than the other municipalities and so forth. Um, there's some of the pipes in, in Patterson have been down for 60 plus years mm -hmm. and so forth. Uh, terracotta, tree roots, and it just took the shifting. And as it rains, and now it's starting to move some more. But the freeze is going to hit us hard. Yeah. Yes. Um, so obviously you're preparing now. Um, what about, you know, I don't know, obviously you have to mend your budget, but what about these state monies, federal monies? Is it too soon, too late? Well, of course, you know, we, we got monies that are coming from the water sector and um, the sewer uh, monies. And right now we're working with our engineers to try to work with the language because when the money came, it was for the water plant. And uh, so if we could get it kind of tweaked with water distribution. Yes, right. And so at that point, if we can get just that distribution in there, that will help us out um, you know we did we got 2.3 million dollars with the sewer plus Clay Higgins blessed us with a uh, 1.5 million dollars yeah. so we came back only one company bid it with the sewer we're pleased with them but we still have monies on the table so we're trying to figure out how we could tweak it and yeah. use it in other areas I'm glad you mentioned that because even talking to fellow mayor uh, a full card, Eugene full yes. card, it is. It's about the language of those bills Correct. and and you have to use them Correct. as they are specified within it because Correct. that verbiage is pretty ironclad. And sometimes you may say, well, I have monies, right. but it's only for a specific um, use. Correct. And, you know, do you think, I mean, now that we're bringing it up, you have all these monies that, that are on the table have you been able to look to see if you're able to start, you know, moving that monies around? Well, we have a, I have an engineer that actually he was the designer of the water plant and so forth. Very intelligent young man, not young man, middle-aged man, um, from out of um, the New Orleans area, and he works very close with the um, with the legislators and so forth. He knows, so I think we're going to be able to do it. Is just we just need our citizens to understand whatever we ask them that we need to get approved that they understand uh, either that, because we're, we're losing, right now there's no water pressure, uh, the water pressure from Red Cypress to probably West End is very low because of a break. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, it's just causing major problems. So the engineer that we have, he's making it happen. But uh, we just need everyone to understand that we have the monies, but because of the sensors being poorly returned, we have to come up with 25% of all the monies that we receive. Now think about it. Now you mentioned the census, 
and this is We have why, to live with that for 10 years. Right, and that's why it's important. I'm glad you mentioned this, because we've talked about this before, but we're living it now. Yes. This is why it's so important to participate in the census, because you're only given a certain amount of money because based on the population that has been recorded. Right. And you know, and, and I tell people, I love, I love what my brother Eugene Procord is doing out in Franklin, but Franklin has a 51% poverty um, uh, rate, so therefore, they're getting a lot. With Patterson with a 48,000 mean income? Yeah. I guess some people out there saying, I don't make that. Well, you better start doing the census. Yeah. <laughs> so it, it's important. So thank you. We're going to come on back. Just uh, make sure to stay tuned right here. We've got much more to cover with the city of Patterson, Mayor Rodney Grogan. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome back to the Voice of the Coast. I am your host, Anika Long. With me, we have Patterson Mayor, Mayor Rodney Grogan. And of course, let's get right into housing. I will tell you at one time, I, I, I found that how everyone was moving into Patterson. I was hearing, you know, the place to be, the place to, you know, to get your next home. Uh, bedroom community was one of the words that, that, or phrases that was used to talk about Patterson. Is that right. still true? Is that is it still a hotbed uh, for investors? Um, Patterson is a hotbed for investors. However, we just need to uh, get with our planning and zoning um, commissioners along with the uh, council, along with um, uh, our potential investors. Because what's stopping everything right now is some language that's in the, the current ordinance. And it makes the, the developers have to put so much on the table um, to get started. And so they're just asking us if we would just tweak some of the language and put an ex expiration date on it um, in regards to paving uh, the streets and so forth, the sub um, surface drainage and all this other type of stuff. So um, we all know that most of the subdivisions that was created in Patterson, they, all the streets were either gravel because right now, where some people want to develop, if the roads that lead you to that is gravel or asphalt, why can't it be gravel or asphalt mm -hmm. and later on improved? Why does it have to be concrete? Yeah. You know, so that's one of the holdups, but it's going to take, but I've been, I'm going to say like this here, we keep putting off, putting off, putting off. We have to start at some point. Renrick did, Renrick was discussed in the 70s. And that's why Renrick is there. We have to have people at the table that can believe and want things to happen in Patterson and stop pushing our people outside. Yeah, so I was going to say you have seemingly at least, I know of, I've seen online at least two investors. Yes, um, that really are three. Three, okay, that are ready and willing to, to build. So you're saying the holdup is the, the creation of streets. The language and, and the requirements right. in recreating a subdivision. We just recently paid $30,000 to have Patterson rezoned. All right, so um, there were people that chose not to attend the meetings and so forth. And when you choose not to attend the meetings or actually come and, and voice your opinion, that means that you're green. So I, Rodney Grogan, and along with many of the council members, had to put ourselves in their places because if you live along the banks of the Lower Chaffalaw in Patterson, that was all zone commercial. Mm. So anytime something is zone commercial, you're in trouble because I can come and put a strip club if I wanted to next door to the house and so forth. But of course, no one attended the meetings. Mm. So some of it was kept commercial and um, some of it was rezoned. We now have identified where we can put soft industrial um, and manufacturer and so forth. But we have 120 acres south of the rail. 60 acres right now is being entertained for housing, mm -hmm. for low-income housing. And I say low-income, I'm not talking about... Just um, affordable housing, uh, Affordable right? housing. Where, where We're talking about... Uh, for new families, young families, What right? used to be low-income was 75000 Low-income right now is 125 150 <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay? But then, so that's south of the rail, all right? So in, in mid-city... On um, the corner of Red Cypress, from Red Cypress and Pork and uh, Martin Luther King, there's a whole area that two investors want to actually develop. 
But if we can just get with planning and zoning and get with the public, I really want the public involved. But come in and, and, and allow these people, because Avalorum taxes, yes, we, we need that. We need, we got all this money for to expand our water plant and we're upgrading our sewer system because the sewer system that we're getting now, I'm looking at state of the art for 20 years from yes. now. I'm not, yesterday is gone. I didn't want to rehab. We want state of the art. So therefore, we're preparing for the future growth of Patterson. Mm -hmm. But it's going to be beginning the, the last week of January. We're going to bring our commissioners with the Planning and Zoning Board back together, and we're going to start working on this. We're going to hear from these investors. We're going to hear from the public, and we're going to start making things happen. I guarantee they want a collaborative effort because that's the only way it's gonna it's gonna work. I they guarantee need to, that people. You know, you want to. We all all they've been told we, it can't happen. Oh, I don't know. Well, let's get a lawyer, somebody that knows. That's right. All right. Well, you heard it here. It's coming up shortly, so make sure to keep your eyes focused on all the social media outlets. And we're telling you here on the Voice of the Coast. We'll see you guys shortly. Come on back. Welcome back to the Voice of the Coast. Let's get right back into it. My guest is Mayor Rodney Grogan. So, all right. So we're talking about uh, water breaks, which are going to be currently uh, uh, addressed coming up, uh, revamping your budget, housing, and just kind of the the obstacles that you you kind of have in place. The the investors are there. Right. It's just trying to. I guess bridge the gap. We just have to go in and tweak. We mm -hmm. have to make some adjustments and make some variances to the, I, I remember when in Broussard, and I didn't understand in the beginning, I saw the, the, the developers were putting so much with concrete, with paved. Mm -hmm. Then they yes. go a little further. Then they go a little further. Right. You know, and so now you have all this out there. Now it's about 10, 10 years ago. I've been in office 13, today made 14 years. Oh. Yes. Yes. Well, yeah. And um, so you're looking at the fact of you have to look beyond today and look at tomorrow. Because when I told you in regards to the, the water breaks, for years we've been saying we shouldn't have to cut off the whole city of Patterson. Right. All right. Well, it was $25,000 years ago for a valve. Mm. All right. So now we're being told the valves are going to run anywhere between thirty-five dollars to $50,000. We need three valves. Mm. So we've been sitting on it. Well, now we're going to use some of that water sector money to make sure that I don't have to cut off Right. The whole city. Yeah, and that's how that's how it's done, honestly. You tell you in, in you you cut off certain areas, so like right. you say, you don't cut off the right. hole and that valve will be able to, you'll be able to isolate. Correct. It. Fix the problem, get it done, you'll be out of water maybe, you know, a couple of hours. So as we got the money for the water and the sewer, let's use that money and so forth. We're upgrading our sewer system to handle the mm -hmm. future expansion of Patterson. Yes. Let's go right into that expansion of of the city of Patterson, okay. economic development. Okay. Uh, notice that just a few of the businesses that at least you know you probably passed, you probably that you know of, have closed. What's um, you know what's the plan to to start revitalizing Patterson? Well, it, it was shocking. Small business community. It, it was really shocking as we have our monthly, uh, our tr every three months we have the council of government. Yes. And so for years I would poke my chest out and they say, well, Patterson mm. has so many businesses. We would always be in a in a uh, black. So now we're showing the loss of businesses. And so then when we start, we sat around the table, we started trying to figure out what businesses that closed. Then we noticed, yeah, we're losing the little mom and pop shops and so forth. Um, when churches closed, that, that was a big hit. Yeah. Um, we have other places now. We went around town and we looked. So what we're going to do is we're going to be reaching out to the business owners, and we're going to start advertising and promoting the businesses ourselves, and we're going to start promoting the vacancies, what, what buildings that they have available. Um, okay. So Will that be done on the city side or the, on the main, street? Side. main street? The city side. The city side. Okay. okay. Because if you do main street, you're strictly talking about main street. Mm. If we do city side, we could talk about the whole, the, the community as a whole. Okay. Because there are businesses south of the rail, um, uh, flower shops and so forth that close and different. Um, so therefore, we do it within the city. Uh, we could add, we could 
help people find mm -hmm. um, buildings and so forth. But uh, it took us to go to Council of Governments because once again, when you have a one-stop shop, half the time we don't know from the sales tax office, office who's closed or whatever. Yeah. And half the time they don't know who's open mm -hmm. and we have to direct them to to get the occupational license and so forth. Right. And then people will open up in Franklin, move to Patterson, and don't go get occupational license. It's not transferable. Mm -hmm. You have to, for every municipality you go into, you mm -hmm. have to get an occupational license. You know license. what, that, I think that's the thing as far as education. Just right. to be perfectly honest, I think this has come up many times during election season. Mm -hmm. um, you know, wanting to grow businesses and grow the business uh, community. A lot of folks don't even know the you know, step one, two, and three of starting a business. Right. And there are so many, you know, potential entrepreneurs, people who want to be business owners, but don't know where to start. And I think that is a concern for so many, so many people. So maybe that's something that, um, and, and I think that is something actually you're trying to, to, to try to help out with right. through your, your, um, your department. Holden Murray. Um, well, let's let's just hold off on that because yeah. I think that's going to be a lot longer than just our 30-second window. But I just want to say that uh -huh. there's monies that's put out there. Like I said, so much money right now out there, and that's to come in the near future. Okay. Well, let's come on back. It's two down, two to go. So we've got much more to cover. So coming right back on the Voice of the Coast. Yeah. Welcome back. So I will tell you just to keep your eye out on some future events to come as far as if you're a small business owner. So pay attention to the city's Facebook page at least, right? right. So of course, we just kind of touched on it a little bit uh, as far as economic development, trying to revitalize um, Patterson's uh, business footprint, you know, trying to get you guys back up and running. Because again, you know, some of those businesses have closed and it kind of hurt your, your, you know, your bottom well, line. Well, what hurts, anything that closes in Patterson hurts the same area as a whole because we have that, all of our money goes in one pot and then we're distributed per capita. So if something closed in Franklin, something closed in Morgan City, Amelia, it affects all of us. That's true. Yeah, definitely. You know, you know and I, I do want to say this, I really want to um, reach out to my Main Street, um, uh, uh, people that own businesses on Main Street, if we could get them tapped into um, the uh, preservation and uh, grants and uh, get them to understand that there's a match. If you put the money out first, that the feds will reimburse, but they're not going to give you the money first. Yeah. And so when you have to come with a plan, mm -hmm. and there's a lot of people that want to do it, but they don't know how to do it. Mm -hmm. And of course, we're not a main street. There will be no more main streets created in Paris, in, um, in Louisiana. So those that qualify, but we are certified um, um, League of Government. So therefore, we do qualify up under for certain grants. Mm -hmm. But those businesses on Main Street that are in the historic district, they can get their monies back, but they have to put it up first. Yeah, yes. Well, I think uh, maybe the, the city of Morgan City had done a little yeah. something like yeah. that. So yeah. Out of respect and in respect and so forth, oh. um, he's, he's no longer with us, and I appreciate what he saw the vision of Patterson, and that's Mr. Lee Felterman. I mean, Lee invested into that downtown area, and from my understanding, what is it, the air, what is air, B, uh, Airbnb? It, it's, it's, that's sold out, I think, for two years. Mm. I, and then there's several others on Main Street. Mm -hmm. You know, um, he owns another one on Main Street, and we have some other people that owns them. Um, but they took the chance. And uh, um, if we could just get other potential investors into that downtown area. Um, I just recently received something about creating a RV uh, park and so forth. And we own land out by the airport. And so somebody said, well, we don't need another RV. I was going to ask you about But that, yes, yeah. we do. I'm going to tell you why. They say because Kemper Williams has I said, but it's not on the water. Oh. Where we own the land up by the airport is by the water. Okay. So if you take and put RVs up there on the water, mm -hmm. that's different from what Kemper Williams. And someone would say, well, Paula, say, well, why is he? I'm not bashing Kemper Williams. What I'm saying is what we can do. Well, and if it's give you it, options, yes. You want. And so the difference is, it would be by the water. Morgan City has theirs by the water. Okay, that's something new. All I right. mean, when things come forward, and I always look at it, and I probably in the beginning say, "Well, we already have that." Right. But then God say, "Come out of that box." Mm -hmm. 
mm. get them box yourself in. Mm -hmm. What's the difference? What, and okay, well, then we do have land by the water mm -hmm. that we can do an RV park. I think this is great, obviously great conversation, and um, somebody at home has, has gotten their wheels turning. How often do you guys meet when you're meeting times so people can come out to if, the council? You meeting? know I'm a very funny person. All you guys just tell me you want to meet with me, mm -hmm. and I'll, I'll make it happen. You know, and uh, d d come to the table and uh, l let's, I, I just want, even with the creation of the subdivisions, I want the public to say, no, we don't want it. I just want them to say, no, we don't want it. Come forward, come to the meetings, mm -hmm. but don't, don't kill something before, mm -hmm. uh, you know, there's so much Without potential Without even for knowing about it. Is so much, saying? so much potential. Oh, okay. Stop being afraid. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Well, give me the meeting times and dates. Um, we meet um, every first Tuesday of the month at 6 p.m. And if you can't come, just go log on and go to... We are at the end. I actually thought we had another segment. Ain't that something? My director didn't tell me anything, but I hopefully we got all the information many people need. Thank you guys so much. See you next time. Um,